Good health to all from Rexall. It's the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist with a welcome from all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have chosen to make the word Rexall part of our own store names. We tell you this by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. And we've placed that famous symbol there because we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. Like Bismarex, for example, this soothing antacid is one of Rexall's most famous products, and for good reason. In Bismarex, scientifically balanced ingredients work in a continuous relay to bring you prompt and prolonged relief from acid indigestion. Yes, Bismarex is just one more outstanding example of why we family druggists tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Some time ago, Phil was shown a blue mink coat, which was suggested as a Christmas present for Alice. After two weeks of indecision, he has finally decided to buy it, and he has brought Frankie down to the fur shop for his expert opinion. <laughs> Mr. Harris, will you please make up your mind? You've had this young lady modeling the fur coat for an hour now. She's getting tired of walking back and forth in front of you. Well, I like the coat, but I've saved my money a long time to get a coat as good as this and... and... Well, I'm not going to buy it until Mr. Remley makes a decision. <laughs> what do you say, Frankie? Keep her walking. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't made up my mind yet. But, Frankie, the girl's getting exhausted. Don't be so thoughtless. Okay, she can rest a while. <laughs> Come here, honey. Sit on my lap. <laughs> now, look, baby, I'm going to give you one more chance. Are you still busy tonight? Remley, stop leering at her. <laughs> now, let's get back to your decision on the mink coat. All I want is your answer. You ain't getting no answer from me till I get an answer from her. <laughs> <laughs> For the last time, honey, you're going to go out with me tonight, or aren't you? No. Get up and keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Harris, about the coat. Remley, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Trying to date a strange girl just because she has a pretty face and a smaltzy figure. <laughs> How a man can lower himself to such depths of degradation is completely beyond my ken. <laughs> well, la di da. <laughs> Curly, where'd you get that line? From the Stella Dallas program. <laughs> She's on too early and asked me to release it at this more convenient time. <laughs> uh, about the coat. Look, Remley, I want to give you a little tip on women. And listen closely, kid, because this comes from the former leader of Wolf Pack number 47. <laughs> Don't ever force yourself on a dame. About the coat. Don't throw yourself at women. Let them throw themselves at you. That's what I used to do. Why, I dated hundreds of gals and I had no trouble getting them to go out with me. All I did was ask them one simple question and they'd say yes every time. What'd you ask them? Do you want a mink coat? <laughs> How did you know, bud? <laughs> oh, 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 you mean do I want this mink coat? <laughs> For a minute I thought he was psycho. <clears throat> <laughs> Frankie, I've made up my mind. I'm going to buy the coat. Well, thank heavens. Not so fast. <laughs> How much you want for this mink-dyed alley cat? Oh, <laughs> why, this is a genuine blue mink, and the price is $4,000. Oh, he must be kidding, Curly. 4000 for a mink? Sure. 
Them little animals were worth a lot of dough. If they weren't, they couldn't afford to run around and make coats. <laughs> Don't seem fair I get $35 a week And one of them little I hate my father <laughs> Why? He made me be a musician When I could have been a mink <laughs> He could have become a mink? With Frankie, it's possible <laughs> He's done stranger things than that, mister uh, Pardon me, gentlemen, but uh, Which one of you is the psychiatrist? <laughs> what are you talking about, psychiatrist? One of you must be Surely they wouldn't let two nuts out alone <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Harris But I can't waste any more time For a lousy $4,000 sale <laughs> We told you we'll take the coat So wrap her up Very well, Missy Take off the coat Yes, sir. Not so fast <laughs> What do you mean telling her to take it off? Keep it on, Mitzi. We're having you wrapped up. The model does not go with the coat. <laughs> you mean we're spending $4,000 and all we get is an empty coat? <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here, Curly. This is a clip joint. Remley, I want the coat empty. I don't think Alice would like a roommate in her mink. <laughs> all right. Wrap the coat up, mister. I'll take it with me. I uh, don't know if this coat will fit your wife. Uh, what size does she wear? Well, I ain't sure. <coughs> All I know is she's got a 54 waist. A 54 waist? <laughs> Fat money belt. <laughs> What's her waist measurement without the belt? I wouldn't know. She hasn't had it off in eight years. <laughs> Look, mister, I'll go home and I'll get my wife's measurements And then I'll come back and then... Oh, gee, but how can I get her measurements without making her suspicious? I can get them for you, Curly I'll mark my arm off like a tape measure Put it around your wife's waist, tighten up, and that way I can I tell... wait, wait <laughs> Why do you have to do it with your arm? So in case I don't get her measurement, it shouldn't be a total loss <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Remley, never mind But I like your idea, but I'm the one that's gonna do it now, come on, let's get over to the house. Hey, we'll see you later, mister. Bye, Mitzi. Mommy, when are you going to make my list off for Santa Claus? Oh, I'll do it now, Alice. Uh, what was it you wanted me to ask for? I want a pretty dress, new shoes, a washing machine like yours, only a toy one, and a bicycle. All right, honey. You run along and I'll start your letter to Santa. Let me see now. Things Alice wants for Christmas. Dress, shoes, washing machine, bicycle. Hello, Alice. The door was open, so I just walked in. Oh, hello, Willie. What are you doing? Writing to Santa Claus. You're writing to... <laughs> oh, my poor sister. <laughs> I knew if she stayed married to that man long enough, she'd get just as feeble-minded as he is. <laughs> I'm writing it for baby Alice. And as soon as I finish this one for Alice, I have to write one for Phil. Oh, Alice, you're joking. <laughs> Surely Philip doesn't expect you to write a letter to Santa Claus for him. He doesn't, huh? Last year, I forgot to write Phil's letter, and on Christmas Eve, he refused to go to bed until I called Santa long distance. <laughs> <laughs> Alice? You've been married to him for eight years now. Aren't you finally ready to admit you made a mistake? <laughs> no. Phil's boyishness is part of his charm. He may not be the smartest man in the world, but I didn't want a mental giant. I know. Where is Tiny Tim? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's downtown shopping for my Christmas present. You know what, Willie? Hmm. He's going to surprise me with a $4,000 blue mink coat. Well, if it's a surprise, how do you know about it? Somebody is going to suggest it to him. What makes you so sure? I know a furrier. <laughs> you know, I've always wanted a blue mink. But, Alice, do you think you can wear mink? What do you mean? Mommy, I... Oh, hello, Uncle Willie. Hello, dear. I just... Alice! Alice, don't interrupt when people are talking. Just what did you mean by that, Willie? Well, I wondered if you could wear it because you're allergic to certain furs. Oh, no, the only fur I'm allergic to is lynx. 
What does allergic mean, Mommy? Oh, I'll, I'll explain it some other time, honey. I have to start lunch. Your daddy will be home any minute now. <laughs> Well, Frankie, I got my arm marked off, but I'm afraid this is going to make Alice suspicious. The last time I came home and put my arm around her, she called the police and made them give me a sobriety test. <laughs> well, gee, Curly, there must be some way you can get her measurements. Hey, I without... got it. I got it. It just came to me. I know a way to get it, boy. I know a way to get my arm around her, and she'll never catch on. Hey, Alice, I'm home. Hey, watch how smooth this is. Oh, hello, Phil. Shall we dance, darling? Oh, how we danced on the night we were wed. Oh, Phil, stop waltzing me around the room. What's the matter with you? I feel like dancing. Oh, how we danced. We're so tightly embraced. Rem marked us down 24 around the way. <laughs> Would you mind repeating that number again? <laughs> Twenty-four ways And now what's with the hip? Well, hold it, my friend I need a both arms for this <laughs> We got what we need You can now let her go oh, Darling, we love you so On here. Second course for length. Oh, how we danced on the night that we met. Oh, if you two want to dance, go dance with each other. I have to finish making lunch. Oh, all right. Hey, Frankie, I didn't get all the measurements. Mm. Look, I'm going upstairs and get the size out of one of her other coats. You stay here and warn me if she happens to come up that way. Yeah, all right. All this fuss to get a fur coat. Oh, well, as long as I have to wait and there's nothing to do, I might as well read their personal mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What have we here? Well, a threatening letter from the gas company. <laughs> oh, look at this bill Alice got from the beauty shop. $400 for one month. How can a woman... Oh, that's Curly's bill. <laughs> now, this is kind of dull I think I'll look at the outgoing mail Well, I'm glad to see they're buying Christmas seals Hey, what's this? Things Alice wants for Christmas Ah, she must have left this here as a hint for Curly Let's see mm, No fur coat on here All she wants is a dress, shoes, washing machine, and a bicycle <laughs> Alice wants a bicycle? Oh, it must be to reduce her heavy hips. <laughs> Could it be possible she doesn't want a fur coat? I better tell Curly. Allergic. Allergic. Gee, that's a funny word. I wonder what it means. Hello, baby Alice. You talking to yourself? Well, hello, Uncle Frankie. I heard Mommy say she was allergic to fur, and I wonder what it meant. Oh, it means she... She's allergic to fur? What kind of fur... It sounded something like rinks or, or pinks or... You mean mink? That's it, mink. Well, I'd better go in and have my lunch. I'll see you later, Uncle Frankie. How do you like that? Only Curly could be that lucky. <laughs> Probably one dame in a million that's allergic to mink, he's married to. <laughs> Saves himself $4,000. Well, Ramley, hey... I got Alice's size. We're all set Curly, now. We got Curly, I got wonderful news for you. Your wife is allergic to mink. What are you talking about? How do you know? She told baby Alice she can't wear mink. Oh, Frankie, this is terrible. Hmm? I've been saving for eight years to buy her that coat, and now she can't wear it. Fine thing. Now I'm stuck with $4,000. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be glad to help pry you loose from it. <laughs> I know where we can lay our hands on a defunct bank in Brooklyn. Never mind. <laughs> I had my heart set on getting her this coat. Well, Curly, if you feel that way about it, get the coat. But she's allergic to mink. So what? She can do the same thing my aunt did. 
My uncle bought her a mink coat, and she was allergic to it. As soon as she put it on, her nose acted up something awful. Started sneezing. She couldn't breathe. It was terrible. What'd she do? What any woman would do if she was allergic to mink. Oh, sent the coat back, huh? No, she wears it all the time. <laughs> you should see how beautiful that coat looks on Aunt No-Nose. <laughs> <laughs> Aunt No-Nose? You mean she... Yep. <laughs> the furrier paid for the operation. <laughs> Silly. I ain't gonna let Alice have any op... The furrier pays for it, huh? <coughs> I wonder how she'd look without... No! <laughs> Gee, this spoils my whole Christmas. Now, what am I going to give her? Fortunately, you happen to have a friend who doesn't mind his own business. I have here a list that Alice made up of what she wants for Christmas. You do? <laughs> oh, Rem, you dove, you. <laughs> hey, let me have it. Here let me are. see it. Here you are. Yeah, let's see what's there. Yeah, dress, shoes, washing machine, bicycle. The dress and shoes I can understand, but what in the world does she want with a washing machine? Well, you know, Alice, she likes to keep busy. Maybe she's going to take in washing. <laughs> What's the bicycle for? So she can deliver the washing after... <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you stop? Well, it's the truth. It is not. She wouldn't take that work away from her mother. <laughs> Besides, Alice has a washing machine, and I... Hey, I got it. Hmm? I guess she must mean a, a, a dishwashing machine. She's always wanted one. But gee whiz, it doesn't seem like enough of a present. And besides, it's... Well, it's not very... It's not a glamorous gift for a girl like Alice. Hey, you're right, Curly. It ain't enough, and it ain't glamorous. Hey, I got it. Get her a combination. A dishwashing machine and a garbage disposal unit. <laughs> That's glamorous? <laughs> well, if that's what she wants, I'll get it for her. Now, look, Remley, I want to get all the shopping done today because I'm leaving tonight for Houston, Texas. Well, what are you going to do there? Well, I'm going to appear with Jack Benny and Dinah Shore at a big charity football game and show on Saturday afternoon. And all of the proceeds will go to the Damon Runyon Cancer Fund, the National Kids Foundation, and Holly Hall of Houston. So you see, it's important that I get the shopping done today. Yeah. Now, I'll go down and order the dress and the shoes, and you go over and order a bicycle and that uh, washing machine combination. Okay, let's go. Hey, Alice, we're going now. See you later. Well, wait a minute, Phil. I want you to listen to the song I'm going to do on Sunday. <laughs> see, every time I mention my song, he runs out of the house. Professional jealousy. <laughs> oh, well, I'll do it for my own amusement. <laughs> Be goody, good, good to me I'll be goody, good, good to you Give me all your kisses And I'll give mine to you Don't go out with anyone else I'll tell the boys I'm through Be goody, good, good to me I'll be goody, good, good to you When others try with all your might And we'll tear up our little black book And see you every night Don't wander in the moonlight With anyone but me And I won't sit with anyone else Beneath the apple tree Be goody good good to me I'll be goody good good to you Give me all your kisses And I'll give mine to you Don't go out with anyone else I'll tell the boys I'm through Be goody good good to me I'll be goody good good to you When someone else says Cut love dear Just say no no can do Be goody good good to me I'll be goody good good
Craig and Frankie so long to get back to the house. I did my shopping, and I... Uh-oh, that must be him now. Hiya, Curly. Well, everything's taken care of. How'd you make out? Well, I got the dress, and I got the shoes, and I got... Ramley, what are those two crates you have there? One is the dishwashing machine, and the other is the disposal unit. Oh, yeah, yeah. They didn't have a combination, so we'll have to put them together ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're very handy at that sort of thing <laughs> uh, Look, Alice is at the market, so I'll tell you what let's do what? Let's get into that kitchen and start installing it right now Hey, hey we're doing all right, you know Oh, of course, it's a cinch Now, let me see We got to connect it up to the water pipe Yeah, but I wish we had a little more room under this sink it's kind of cramped in here, hey, you where can't... Hey, groceries? Where is everybody? Oh, we're down here, Julius. Now where? We're under the sink. Well, that's a logical place for a couple of drips. <laughs> <laughs> what are you two sitting under the sink for? We're under here to help Mrs. Harris. She wanted a dishwashing machine and the garbage disposal unit. Oh. Which one of yours is which? <laughs> We're installing the machines You two are going to install... Oh, this I gotta see <laughs> You mind if I pull up a chair and watch? Yeah. Oh, you want to learn something, huh? Yeah This should be an interesting lesson of applied stupidity <laughs> <laughs> Now, let me tell you something, kid If you're going to sit here and watch, we want you to be quiet You understand? Quiet All right, now, Remy, let's get back to that pipe Right now, uh, there are two pipes here. Mm -hmm. One is for gas, and one is for water. Which is which? <laughs> this is the water pipe. Uh-uh. I said be quiet, kid. You heard him, be quiet. That's right, quiet. Pianissimo. <laughs> you, you, let it go, let it go. I wouldn't even attempt that myself. That's as tough as a foreign word. Yeah. <laughs> I know a water pipe when I see one, kid. All right, now look, Curly, while you hook up this pipe, I'll get the two units installed in the sink, okay? All right. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, we did it, Frankie. We got the whole thing installed. Uh, neat job, huh, Julius? <laughs> All right, Curly. Turn on the water and watch it work. Okay. Hey, listen to that water Look in the dishwasher, you'll see it pouring in Francis Huh? It ain't coming into the dishwasher <laughs> <laughs> Look on your side That ain't coming into the disposal unit either Now look at the stove <laughs> Now, look, Remley, you must have connected the gas pipe to the sink. Oh, Curly, I'm not that stupid. I forgot to turn on the water valve to the sink. Now then, I'll connect it, and we'll audition it. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Frankie. Are you sure we put this thing together right? Aren't these two units supposed to be separate? No, no, no. We got them right. Oh. The garbage disposal unit fits right in the middle of the dishwashing machine. <laughs> That's the way you make a combination of it yeah. You do? Sure It's wonderful Gee, Frankie You know everything What a perfect friendship <laughs> One guy's a moron And the other one's his yes man <laughs> I'm telling you something, kid. You better keep quiet if you want to stand there now. <laughs> you keep out of this. All right, Remley. Now, how's it work? It's very simple. You take all your dirty dishes with the leftovers and put them in the washer, thusly. 
Now you put the knives and forks in, too. Oh, they'll both go in there, too. Everything. Now, when you turn it on, gravity holds the dishes to be washed while centrifugal force throws the refuse into the disposal <laughs> unit. <laughs> Figures. <laughs> Only to you guys. <laughs> no, it'll work. Now that I got everything in there, all I have to do is turn on the faucet, let it run for a while, open it up, and presto, we have finely ground dirty dishes and sparkling garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie, will you do me a favor? Now stop arguing with that kid and let's get busy. All right, Julius, Phil. you're so smart, we're going to show you. I'll just... Phil, Phil, will you come out to the car and help me get... Ca- well, what are you fellows doing in the kitchen? Oh, shucks, Alice. Now you came in too soon. <laughs> oh, well, as long as you're here, I might as well show it to you. Hey, honey, now you come over here and stand in front of the sink. <laughs> oh, have I got a surprise for you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> honey... Now, you just watch while I turn this faucet on. What's that? Now, just watch. Phil, oh. for heaven's sake, what's going on here? What's happening? Never mind that duck, honey, duck. <laughs> Whoa, watch them knives sailing through the air. Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But first, here's your Rexall family drugger. Whenever a customer asks me to recommend a brand of aspirin, I tell them to choose the tablet that's air-conditioned. Now I've heard everything. Which one is that? Naturally, it's Rexall aspirin, ma'am. But why do you call it the air-conditioned tablet? Well, it's like this. It's the extremely low moisture content of Rexall aspirin that makes it the fastest disintegrating tablet you can buy... And in order to keep it that way, through every step of its manufacture, Rexall aspirin is compounded and compressed into tablets in specially sealed air-conditioned rooms where the humidity and temperature are kept at ideal levels. And that's why you say choose the aspirin tablet that's air-conditioned. Exactly, ma'am. By laboratory test, Rexall aspirin disintegrates faster than any other leading brand tested. That's good enough for me. And it's good enough for 10,000 independent family druggists, too. Quality like that is what we're talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. We're a little late, so good night, folks. We're on our way to Houston. We'll see you, Sam Maciel. Good night, everybody. Good night. In a recent nationwide survey, American homemakers agreed that one of the most important items in the family medicine cabinet is a reliable all-around mouthwash and gargle. No wonder, then, that millions of American mothers choose Rexall's MI-31 to fill that need. Used full strength, Rexall MI-31 kills contacted germs in a matter of seconds. And remember, Rexall gives you a full pint of MI-31 at the same price you pay for smaller quantities of other leading brands. Ask for it wherever you see the orange and blue Rexall sign on the window. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Stay tuned for Sam Spade, then three great stars on Theater Guild on NBC. NBC.